Hi, my name is Marsha, I'm the blonde from Coding Blonde, and today we're talking about cybersecurity and how companies may use your data online. So to talk about the subject, I have interviewed Brad, who is an expert in cybersecurity, an awesome person, and also the director of Cyber Academic Partnerships at Circadence. So let's see what Brad has to say about cybersecurity. Hi Brad, how are you? Good afternoon, I'm well, thanks. Um, thank you so much for fi for finding time to be on my channel and talk cybersecurity to my audience. I've been looking forward to it. I've watched a couple of your videos and checked out some of your website and absolutely loving it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. It means a lot. Okay, so let's just jump straight into it. Um, my first question to you, and you've explained this to me in a very, very cool way before. What is cybersecurity? Cybersecurity is it's all over the news and I think um, setting kind of the groundwork is so important for folks to start to wrap their mind around uh, the idea of uh, their cyber posture and, and cybersecurity by definition uh, includes technology, policies, practices, processes uh, to defend the, the cyberspace, the world of cyberspace, everything from computers and servers to mobile devices. Um, and the list goes on. Mm -hmm. And why should we care about that? Why should we care about our cybersecurity? So cybersecurity, the, the one cybersecurity posture is kind of the lingo in the industry is how resilient are you to a, a possible attack? Um, the reason we all need to be so familiar with cybersecurity awareness and, and our posture uh, is because as technology becomes more affordable and more accessible and the um, kind of the profitability of a successful breach increases, uh, there's more of an incentive for uh, the, uh, the cyber, cyber adversaries to poach to look at stealing information, credit card data, medical records, and all of these. And so it's, it's really become uh, more than just IT literacy these days to become more cyber literate um, so that you, you understand uh, not only what's at risk, uh, but how. Mm. I like that term, cyber literacy. That's awesome. It's a good one. Yeah, it's uh, hopefully uh, I'm championing it as, as kind of a new tagline. So cyber literacy is is on its way up. Yeah, I yeah I love I love that. I'm gonna start using that okay. for sure. <laughs> um, and I'll give all the credits to you <laughs> when you. I don't know if I deserve it, but um, I'll definitely take the credit. Sounds good. <laughs> and. I remember we had a conversation the first time we met about companies using our data online. Do we actually own our data or is it out there for anyone to use? It's a good question um, and I think the answer kind of depends on, on who you're asking. Um, whether it's the individual, whether it's the organization, whether it's the government, the military, um, everyone's going to have a much different way to, to view that question. Um, I think um, oftentimes when, when I'm asked this, uh, I, I talk about programs like Facebook, like Twitter, like Instagram, like Snapchat, and so on and so forth. And when we're engaging with these platforms, whether they're social media or not, um, and we sign up for them without any kind of a registration fee or a monthly subscription fee, um, that's the trade-off. And I think most people have a hard time wrapping their mind around, uh, you know, this Facebook account, this whatever is free to me. Um, but it's free, you know, you're not mm -hmm. paying money for it, but you are sacrificing that data. And um, it's clearly expressed in their terms and conditions and their rules and regulations and so on and so forth. And so I think um, part of that cyber literacy, going back to the term, is really understanding, um, do I want to make that trade off? And if so, then no, I don't own my data. Um, now, there are some things like medical records and so on and so forth that um, whether or not you own it should be protected mm -hmm. um, and not abused. Um, and so I think there's a little bit of a slippery slope there in terms of uh, who owns the data versus how can that data then be used if it stays confidential, if it's then becomes uh, you know opportunities for um, corporations to advertise and market to you based off of uh, your tendencies online, um, then that's a whole other question. Yeah, fair enough. And I guess there is something being done about that with the whole GDPR and 
HIPAA compliance when mm -hmm. it comes to med medical data. Absolutely. So that's good. Yeah, and at schools, you know, PII, personally identifiable information, is a big one. Um, and speaking of GDPR, California is looking at implementing a new piece of legislation that's very similar to GDPR, where um, an organization's profits can be tapped um, mm -hmm. if data is exposed to predators. Um, and looking at, I think it's two years out is when that's going to be implemented. Mm -hmm. hmm. And well, hey, with all the hacking and all the breaches <laughs> that are happening right now, I don't mind that right. <laughs> regulation. Yeah. So someone's got to step up to the plate. Exactly. Um, and you know, I think the the interesting thing about right now in 2018 is policy in cyberspace is being determined now as we speak, and it's such an instrumental moment in the world of cybersecurity to where. Uh, we have a lot of uh, opinions that are being shared and gray area that's being explored uh, and uh, all of this is incredibly important to establishing the legislation and uh, there isn't a whole lot out there and what is legal and what isn't legal and as these breaches uh, become more public and uh, different organizations both public and private uh, you know become exposed uh, there, there is, that's kind of a, a, a ongoing conversation. Fair enough. Fair enough. And in this world of, I don't know, insecure, insecurity where we don't really own our data, you know, we use it to access all these platforms, how can we protect ourselves? Should we not have a Facebook account? Well, Facebook, using the Facebook example mm -hmm. in particular, or what are the measures that you would recommend for people to take? It's a good question. Um, there, there are several. Um, I think uh, the conversation is always between uh, you know, the, the IT staff or yourself personally kind of setting up the cyber hygiene policies, right? So maybe your password has to be 17 characters and capital letters and lowercase letters and special characters and blah, blah, blah. Um, in practice, that's difficult to execute. Mm -hmm. And so I think there needs to be some kind of compromise between setting those policies and setting those standards um, and also making the connection to individuals in terms of why it's important to follow those standards. Um, humans are self-protected by nature. Mm -hmm. And so when you talk about uh, making it real or hitting home and explaining to them the implications of a poor cyber hygiene, uh, they, they want to defend their turf and their territory and their data and their information and their personal habits. Um, so in terms of protecting yourself, uh, you know, there's two-factor authentication. I think at, at the most basic level, uh, we can look at uh, whether it's a social media account, whether it's your uh, online banking app, or whatever the case may be. Um, you know, you log in with your username and your password, and then once you've logged in on a certain device, it's going to send you a text or an email with a code that you then insert. And um, that's two-factor authentication. Um, you know, I think a lot of people find that. Uh, the push notifications that come through on your phone to update your apps, to you know refresh uh, your browsers and, and install new uh, updates to operating systems. That they're going to drain my battery. They're going to take my data. Whatever the case may be, data in terms of consumption on your mobile plan, mm -hmm. not like your personal data. But um, it, it's important to keep up with that stuff. They're updating that for a reason, and they're introducing new patches. Um, new solutions to uh, what could be vulnerabilities in their software, in their environments. Um, and so that's another way to protect yourself. Um, and I think the third thing that I would mention is just knowing what makes you vulnerable and what makes up a, a cyber hygiene. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, in one of my workshops that I gave last week, I, I talked kind of about cyber hygiene in becoming a daily practice. And I said, did you shower today? You mm -hmm. know, of course you showered today or yesterday or, you know, within a reasonable amount of time. And I hopefully. think it's hopefully, <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and I think it's becoming more important that we look at cybersecurity that way and kind of check in with our habits and make sure that we are being responsible in that sense to uh, really kind of understand the perimeter and the boundaries and how we're putting ourselves out there and how we're offsetting some of that risk. Fair enough. Yeah, that's awesome. And I mean, yeah, there's so many different ways in which we can be vulnerable, but if we stay on top of that, if we kind of take that, take those vulnerabilities informed, mm -hmm. I guess that's yeah, the way. To absolutely. 
Yeah. Cyber literacy. Cyber literacy, so that you don't get hacked through your smart microwave. That's right. Yeah. Yes. Because that would be upsetting. <laughs> they will know what you eat every day and they will judge you for warming up that pizza. They might. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely might. I'm in trouble if that starts happening. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much. This yes. was awesome and super informative. Great. Well, thanks for taking the charge and making this public and to start to spread the word. And you know, the, the more people that hear about uh, practices and how they can protect themselves, the better we all are. Um, it's really become the case that cybersecurity is everyone's responsibility, whether or not IT is in your title or will be in your title. Um, we all have a, a role to play in protecting that. So let's become cyber literate. Here we go. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Thank you so much, Brad. That was awesome. Super informative and super helpful. And I hope that the viewers have a better understanding of how their data might be used online by different companies. And they kind of have an understanding of what they should do, what they shouldn't do, where to be cautious and all that stuff. So if you guys are interested in checking out Sir Cadence, I will leave the link in the description. They do awesome stuff around cybersecurity education. They have a ton of different resources, including Project Ares, which is an awesome virtual game where you learn and practice cybersecurity. Check that out, it will be in the description and yeah, if you guys are interested in learning more about cybersecurity, make sure to subscribe to this channel. Go test that button right now because there will be more awesome content around cybersecurity and actually I'm publishing video number two with Brad soon. So yes, stay tuned. Um, we will talk about Team Red versus Team Blue, which is an exciting topic. Um, yeah, so make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications not to miss that. And also you can find me on other social media at Coding Blonde and I think that's it. I think uh, on this note, I will wish you a wonderful time of the day you're currently experiencing. Bye.